Hi guys, um, these are just um, a few sort of um, bits of information that can help you with your first writing assignment. Remember the title is Briefly Describe Flow Theory. Um, really, um, this is just some information about what uh, teachers are looking for in your answer. Okay, so let's begin. Why do academic writers define things? All right, I'm just going to read this out for you. In academic writing, students are often expected to give definitions of key words and phrases in order to demonstrate to their instructors that they understand these terms clearly. Um, so basically, you're going to have to do a lot uh, of this in your freshman studies and beyond. So um, we start practicing doing it now. Academic writers generally, however, define terms so that their readers understand exactly what is meant when certain key terms are used in context of a particular piece of writing. Okay, so this is just making sure that you're giving a clear definition of uh, the topic that you've studied. <clears throat> what is a formal definition? All right, a formal definition is one sentence that contains three parts. The term that needs defining. Um, term, we can also call this the concept. Um, the class to which the item belongs to. How do we classify it? And the differentiation of the item from all other members of its class. And by differentiation, what we, means it, what we mean is how is this particular thing different from other, other types? So if it's a theory, how is this theory different from other theories? You know, if it's a type of car, what makes this car different from other cars? So um, we also call this concept class uh, characteristics. So concept, what is it? Class, how do we classify it? And what characterizes this? What makes it different from other things? Okay, so our first writing assignment is on flow theory. So how exactly does this relate to us? Uh, I'm going to show you an example now of the CCC pattern. If you've written something different, then you might be correct. Okay, this is just one example. It's not the only example. Okay, so flow, this is our concept. This is the term that we're trying to define. Okay, how do we classify it? Well, it's a type of theory. What type of theory? One from the field of psychology. So that's how we're classifying it. And um, how is this different from other theories? Well, it describes how people can achieve happiness. So that's, how it, that's its main special characteristic. That's how it differs from other theories. Okay, so flow is a psychological theory that describes how people can achieve happiness. That's just my example. Um, look in your piece of writing. See if you have like a defining sentence like this. If you think you don't, then uh, that's something for us to talk about in the tutorial. Okay, so what are some ways of differentiating a term or a concept? All right, I'm going to look at some things now. And these are all sort of pieces of information that I want you to include in your answer. And if you include all of them, then you're, you're going to pass. And the same thing will happen, the same thing, you'll pass if you get this in an exam, this kind of question, an extended definition. Okay, the following are ways of differentiating a term and extending the definition beyond the sentence level. So we've got our first sentence, which was back here. We want to go beyond this. We want to get up to our word limit. We can try to use these to develop our definition of flow. Okay, here we go. So what's the first one? Name its essential properties, characteristics. So, what is the essential characteristic of flow? Okay, here's just an example again. So flow, what makes this theory special is the fact that it describes the feeling of you totally being absorbed in an activity. So this is what I think makes, this is the essential part of this um, particular concept. Okay, how does it work? What does it do? So, two questions here. How can we experience flow? 
what kind of activities do we need to be doing? So, in your answer, um, I would be expecting a sentence that uses these words. Something about doing an activity that you enjoy, and also some mention of the fact that this activity has to be challenging. It can't just be sort of lazy and easy. It has to give some kind of challenge to you. That's how flow works. If you don't have this enjoyment and this level of challenge, then you're not going to experience flow. Number three. If the term is an object, describe what it looks like, what it consists of. Well, flow isn't an object, is it? It's um, a state of mind. It's um, a feeling that you can experience. So this doesn't, refer this doesn't really help us now. <coughs> We'll look at some other uh, extended definitions later, and we'll need to describe the physical appearance of it, or what parts come together to make it. But not today. All right, number four. If the term is a process, explain how to make or do it. Okay, well it is. It's, um, it's a process that your brain goes through when you're doing particular activities. So, when does flow occur? Now, in your answer, I'd expect to see something about this. Okay. So, flow, there has to be sort of some very deep concentration. You, your brain has to really be focusing on the activity that you're doing. Um, examples of activities we can do. So, uh, some of you mentioned watching the television. Um, if you're doing this, this doesn't always... It's not really good for flow because you're not really f involved or concentrating on it. Um, there are other things in the book, some, you know, painting, writing, doing certain sports, for example, are things. So I'd expect you to sort of say the fact you need to concentrate deeply and the kind of activities that you can do. Okay, so how do we classify? Here's some nice um, language that you can use, okay? I'm just going to give you a list here. Here we go. So not all of these are particularly relevant for the flow example, but some of them we can use, okay? And um, we'll try and use these um, again in the future when we're defining things. If you want, I can make a handout of this for you, we can, or I can draw it on the, write it up on the board in class. Okay, sometimes you're going to need to... Um, look at numbers, there are two or three different parts of um, flow, but in flow there isn't, it's just the, the one idea. Okay. So an exact number with countable nouns, x has three advantages, three aspects, three functions, or with uncountable nouns, it has some, a number of many advantages to this thing. Okay, so um, I hope that's given you some ideas for this. Well, we're going to have a tutorial this week anyway to talk about it in more detail.